Theodore Roosevelt once said that the worst of all fears is the fear of living. I tend to agree. While we might be living longer than ever before, I can't help but feel like there's less life in our years than ever before. All the wonderful comforts, conveniences, and safety features of modern civilization have made us more sedentary, distracted, and risk averse than ever before. And in short, our lives are boring, and so are we. Monotonous days bleed into monotonous weeks, months, and even years, to the point that when folks ask, oh, you know, what have you been up to, and you reply, nothing, for many of us, that's actually not too far from the truth. For our uncivilized ancestors who hunted and fought for their very survival, adventure and risk were part of their daily lives. It's something that they experienced continuously for hundreds of thousands of years as they fulfilled their role as protectors, providers, and procreators. While danger was readily apparent in the first two, right, that, that is protecting and providing, that makes sense why that would be dangerous, it was also, albeit less obvious, in the third imperative, which is procreation, right? But procreation was actually highly competitive, right? Men vied, sometimes violently, for highly valued mates. Consequently, whether men were on the hunt, on the battlefield, or in competition for females, danger was an inevitable part of existence for our ancestral forebears, right? Without danger, you didn't feed your family, you didn't protect your loved ones or pass along your lineage. Thus, we came to embrace risk to our reputations, our bodies, and even our lives as sort of a necessary component of life itself. With risk came reward, and the dangerous journey was the adventure which made life worth living. But we definitely live in a very different world today, right? One sort of permeated by this culture of bubble-wrapped safetyism, where you have clear lines that demarcate safe from unsafe. So think like the swimming pool, the garbage disposal, or the curb, right? Somewhere along the way, we went from fortune favors the bold to better safe than sorry. While our ancestors accepted risk as part of their daily lives, we've sought to mitigate risk as much as possible. So, like, you want to climb a rock? Cool! There's a fake one over there. <laughs> Sign this waiver, right? Put this helmet on, put on this harness, attach this rope, step onto the blue mat, and do exactly what your instructor tells you to do. Everywhere we look, there's signs of our obsession with risk aversion, and I actually mean literally, right? No swimming, no fishing, no skating, no running, no climbing, no children left unattended. We need to be warned that our piping hot coffee can burn our genitals, right? That plastic bags can suffocate us, and that we shouldn't eat the tiny little desiccant packets in our beef jerky. To grasp how far this has gone, think about like the Boy Scouts, for instance. So in an effort to mitigate risk, the Boy Scouts have banned paintball, airsoft, laser tag, and rubber band and water balloon fights, unless the water balloons are smaller than a ping pong ball and the Boy Scouts wear safety glasses. And no, I'm not actually kidding. A bunch of schools in the United States and Europe have even banned TAG at recess, and some schools have actually banned recess altogether. Texas, out of all places, has passed regulations to ban 11 different types of playground equipment at uh, childcare facilities. So this is like seesaws, parallel bars, rings, and even fireman poles. Other places have banned merry-go-rounds, steep slides, and wooden playground equipment over fears of splinters. It's really hard for me not to look back fondly on the risk-filled playgrounds of my youth, right? Trying not to tear my scrotum <laughs> as I would jump over the jagged top of the chain link fence just to gain access to the actual playground. Losing my death grip on the merry-go-round and flying 15 feet landing on my head on hard-packed gravel and earth, right? Plummeting down that steep metal slide that was so hot in the summer that it would melt the flesh from my very bones. Those were the days. Though we might be living in a more risk-adverse world of padded corners and, and safety helmets and those soft blue mats, we're still programmed to seek risk out. Deep down, many men still crave that wild life of our forefathers with its adventure and its risk contrasting so blatantly with our modern, sheltered, tamed, and overly comfortable existence. We see this today in the rise of like obstacle races, where you have weekend warriors paying for the privilege of running several miles 
scaling cargo nets and then crawling through the mud. Or you have ultra marathons where you have these sadists <laughs> who run so far that their nipples bleed, that their toenails fall off, or they crap their pants, which isn't something I ever see myself um, getting into. Other people take it to an entirely different level of extreme where they'll surf big waves, they'll jump out of perfectly good airplanes, and they'll rob banks. Actually, I think that's point break, but um, you get the idea. Rock and roll. In the great book, Wild at Heart, author John Eldridge writes that adventure with all of its requisite danger and wildness is a deeply spiritual longing written into the soul of man, right? The masculine heart needs a place where nothing is prefabricated, modular, non-fat, Ziploc, franchise, online, microwavable, right? Where there's no deadlines, there's no cell phones or committee meetings, right? Where there's room for the soul. Where finally the geography of us corresponds to the geography of our heart. There's this story in his book that illustrates this really well. So Eldridge was at this conference when an older gentleman in his 60s pulled him aside. So sort of quietly, almost apologetically, the old man started speaking of his love for sailing and of the open sea and how he and a buddy eventually built their own boat. And then came this twinkle in his eye. And he said, we were sailing off the coast of Bermuda when we were hit by this raging storm, right? It really came out of nowhere. 20 foot swells in a 30 foot homemade boat. I thought we were both gonna die. And then he pauses for dramatic effect and he leans in and he confesses, he says, it was the best time of my life. <laughs> Perhaps my favorite example illustrating man's innate desire for risk and adventure comes from 1912 when you have the Antarctic explorer, Ernest Shackleton, absolute stud, love the guy. If you don't know him, look him up. But he's looking for volunteers for his expedition. According to a very popular legend, he placed this ad in the London Times and he said, men wanted for hazardous journey. Small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness. Constant danger, safe return, doubtful. Honor and recognition in case of success. The next morning, 5,000 men lined up to volunteer. Such men understood that there's much to be said about living a fearless life, right? Of seeking adventure and embracing the risks that inevitably come with it. So Jack London, the brilliant author of a bunch of classics, right, he wrote Call of the Wild and White Fang, he understood this really well. And he did this interview in 1916, and he did this, this amazing quote. He says, I'd rather be ashes than dust. I'd rather that my spark should burn out in a brilliant blaze than it should be stifled by dry rot. I'd rather be a superb meteor, every atom of me in magnificent glow, than a sleepy, impermanent planet. The proper function of a man is to live not to exist. I shall not waste my days in trying to prolong them. I shall use my time. The question then is, how are you using yours? In my upcoming men's program, the Roosevelt Society, which will be opening up at the end of this month, very pumped about that, we dive much deeper into all this stuff, discussing why taking measured risks and seeking out adventures are important, why it's important historically, uh, anthropologically, and scientifically right? What those actually look like in our modern lives. And a key piece, how to make them a priority that doesn't get continuously put on the back burner. So if you're looking to live, not just exist, then the Roosevelt Society is going to be for you. But to strike a match now and to quit waiting, here's a few quick tips that you can use to incorporate some risk and adventure into your life right now. So with the weather changing, get outdoors. Plan a solo trip or one with the boys. Go camping. Go fishing. Go kayaking or canoeing, right? Sign up for a martial arts class, take a road trip, or ask a beautiful woman out on a date, right? Fortune favors the bold. The most powerful threat to greatness isn't evil, it's mediocrity. And that stems from, just like Roosevelt said, a fear of living. So get yourself out there, earn that patina. I'll see you all next time. Thank you folks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, if you want to further support my efforts, you can do so on Patreon or buy some gear for the Modern Frontier for the Man vs. History Outfitter Shop. See you folks next time.
before I go, just want to make sure that I thank my Patreon patrons. Special thank you to my gold tier patrons, The Innocents, Ashley Gertensen, Hurton Wade, Man vs. Moose, Price V, Cyber, Will S. Baker, Rich Christensen, Comrade Krieger, Blake Graham, Joshua Horton, Archie Dak, Dawson E, Zong Freezes, Noah Ovens, Noah 5943, Jigsaw, Coco Rockout, Occam's Ghost, Reese Yerby, Art Bocklers, Mythical B60, Gavin Atherney, Gavin Ath, Gavin Abernathy, <laughs> and Jake Bram. Also want to make sure that I thank my silver and bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all your support. Let's keep growing. Let's keep doing what we're doing. See you all next time.